It's a typical day for the Speedo Cops. Typically, Chief Inspector Creech is stationed in the station. Our guys are hand-packed. Um, we're not just talking about your ordinary sort of um, bobby cop, cop on the beat, if you will. Our guys are specially trained uh, in all types of conditions. Enjoy yourself. Move along, sir. Um, we find that the Speedo itself increases mobility. It increases visibility. <laughs> Um, efficiencies and various things like this. All the big crimes around the city, you'll find um, speedo cops, uh, um, the speedo cop branch, handling all the big stuff. If you see this wall here, um, that used to be covered in graffiti, look at it now, it looks a lot better. You know, we're more approachable, we're out there on the street, we're diff dealing with the difficult aspects of day-to-day -day crime in the big city. But there's a lot of big perception out there in the public, often furnished by the media, that, that cops are thick. Uh, that's, that's simply not true. I mean, I myself got four school cert subjects. She Finding a real job can be a job in itself. But remember, the average person doesn't even know what they want to do until they're about 49. Here are some tips to get you started. Step one, you must fabricate a CV. At the end of the day, it's the CV that gets the job, not you. Remember, just because you've done something, it doesn't necessarily deserve a mention. To be quite honest, you're better off being dishonest and mentioning things you haven't actually done but are relevant to the job. You're only kidding yourself by being honest. Step two, you'll need to write a clever letter to accompany your CV. It doesn't really matter what you write as long as you're confident. Here's an example. Dear Mr. Woods, I feel I'd make an excellent candidate for the director's position at your company. I am the best and I can get on with everybody. So big boy, what do you say? I'm available for an interview anytime but Thursday or Friday. You know how it is. If I'm not at home, leave a message with my flatmate's boyfriend, Gavin, or on Tina's mobile. Thanks, you bastard. Yours faithfully and then your name. Step three, when you arrive at a job interview, Try to make a good impression. If you don't own a car, lease one. Nowadays it's hard to tell the difference. Try to be about 25 minutes late, no more, no less. This will put the power or the ball in your court. Wear a suit if possible. If you don't own one, wear a friend's suit jacket cover. If it's from a quality suit, he will still be impressed. If you must smoke, ask for an ashtray or to be sat by a window. There's nothing more we can do. You may be offered a drink. If you're not, don't pull out a hip flask and treat yourself. If you were properly prepared, you would have had a couple prior to the interview. You'll be asked a number of questions about your qualifications. You must be confident. If you can't remember all the details from your CV, question his or her qualifications. You'll be asked a lame question like, where do you see yourself in five years' time? There are a number of approaches to this question. Number one, halfway through my 10-year plan. Number two, why don't you mind your own business, you bastard? He'll be reminded of your humorous letter with this one. Both of these are good answers. Judge it for yourself. Finally, make constant references to other jobs in the area that you're considering. Act as if he or she has taken up your valuable time. Perhaps look at your watch occasionally. Even if you don't own a watch, the simple act can be quite effective. At the conclusion of the interview, shake hands, but don't overdo it. Chat to other people in the office. They will assume you've already landed the big job. Remember, confidence, 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 you bastard. Next week, we'll show you how to leave this job with a healthy redundancy package. Good mate, how you going? Good, good. Uh, got a problem here with the old video. Seems to be stuck. The video is stuck inside the machine. Oh, okay. Um, yep. It's the old JV60, eh? You want to get that tape out there, right? Yeah. Let's have a, see if I can have to do something here. Oh, no, she's in there good. 
I might have to take this out back to the technical department, mate. They should have to sort it for you. Cool. You know? Thank you. No problem. Just wait around here. It shouldn't okay. be a minute. Yeah. Uh, problem sorted for you. No charge for that today. Cool. Um, have you got the video? Well, yeah, it's out back, but I thought you just wanted the tape. That's not good at all, Julianne. No, that's not very good, is it, Steve? No, that's what I just said. It's not good at all, Julianne. No, that's not very good, is it, Steve? You book your pet into a pet hotel. You tick boxes requesting walks, nail clips, and shampoos. Is ticking a box a legally binding contract? And what if you tick the wrong box? Consider this next story. Well, I, I took my cat to Future Pet. Uh, I was going out to the batch for the weekend. When I went back to Future Pet to pick her up, you know, they were quite pleased. But when they brought her out, she looked like this. Clearly your cat has gone through some sort of um, snap freezing cryogenic process here um, but you didn't ask for that did you? I thought the cryogenetics wa was a part of the shampooing you know and uh, I just sort of thought well she might, might be something extra so uh, they never really explained what the cryogeneticism really was. To find out more about cryogenics we talked to university biologist Dr John MacDonald. Cryogenics is the study of the effect of low temperature, generating low temperature, and uh, uh, particularly its effect on uh, living organisms and cells. Small, single-celled organisms are routinely frozen and brought back to life. <laughs> A spokesman from Future Pet believes that legally, they had every right to freeze Chesney. We're very sorry that uh, Chesney did end up frozen. It was simply a, an error uh, with um, someone ticking the wrong box. And the client actually ticked cryogenics when I think they were referring cuddles. You know, we're, we're sorry it happened, but that's, that's you know, how it, how it works. Yeah. Look, I'm having a bit of trouble hearing you there with the, with the voice and that. Um, do you want a lozenge for your, your throat? No, I'm fine. Okay. Later on the Tuesday, Gordon phoned Future Pet to complain about the bill. He was concerned oh, yeah, that the $1,545 had yeah. been charged. It's Gordon well, Donaldson what... here. I'm ringing up to Sorry. complain about Sorry. the cryogenic... Sorry. It's just a recreation, all right? Don't have a do it. You're totally overcooking at the moment. Oh. All right? No, just don't, just don't worry about it. Shall I complain now? No, just, 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 oh, okay. just don't do anything. No, just I'm not complaining. No, just... With an ageing population of 0.5% and the Kiwi dollar... And the Kiwi dollar being so strong at the moment, how much can we realistically be expected to pay for a frozen cat? Yeah, I'm, I'm just confused, but I don't really feel like I want to pay. Technology-wise, can you cryogenically freeze, say, a dog, a canine? No, no, we're, we're years away from doing dogs. Years away. Why is that? Is They're just too big, um, you know, and obviously you're not going to get a St. Bernard or a Labrador in a one by two metre thing. Basically, they need to be the size of a cat. I don't think it's right that they did this without asking. There's one point I want to make here, and that is that um, the cat is still with the owner. The cat still lives in the house with the owner. But he's frozen. Well, he, he is in the freezer, but he is still a part of the family. If I could just get a, a word in edgeways here. Gordon, in 30 words or less, what would you say to Future Pet about their practices? Well, I'd certainly say don't freeze a cat.
until you've, can, you know, I've got the phone at the beach. They could have easily rang me up and then said, oh, shall we freeze your cat? I, I probably would have said no. Thanks to Gordon's gross incompetence, he's pretty much responsible for the whole fiasco. Legally, he doesn't have a leg to stand on and he'll have to pay the whole bill. He is a loser. Having said all that, I don't understand the first thing about contracts. So perhaps, Kevin, you could explain that a little bit better. In a later program, legally, where do you stand if your cat spontaneously combusts? Back to you, Kevin. You've got to take advantage of it, Dr. Chavez. You've heard the rumors. I will be selling the clinic. But you can't. You give me one reason why not, Dr. Chavez. Because you don't own it. Yeah, thanks for coming in, Lee. That's uh, it's good of you to come in at short notice. I saw last week's show. Uh, we all saw it, but um, we don't get it. You don't get what, Scott? Oh, what's the message? It's sexy. It's a sexy. It's it's sexy. It's uh. It's it's nothing happens. It's his head falls off. As you know, ladies and gentlemen, here at the classic, we bring you only the cream of the crop, and we've got a. Dynamite comedian for you right now. He's one of the hottest young acts in New Zealand at the moment. A big round of applause for Chico, ladies and gentlemen. Chico! My king. <laughs> you ever had those um those little cheese in the plastic, the slices? <laughs> what, what's all that about? <laughs> what's with that shit? Yeah, no, I was walking down the road the other day and I went to uh, one of those one hour photo labs. We need to value your photos in like one hour. <laughs> one hour, it's crazy. <laughs> one hour. So I go in there and I'm getting my photos developed. Then they come back, the photos come back in those little packets. And what's all that shit? <laughs> what's all that about? <laughs> um, we've got anyone here from, from Hastings? <laughs> yeah. What's all that shit? What's, what's all that about? What's that about? Anyone, anyone here use a cell phone? <laughs> What's all that shit? Cell phones? <laughs> Crazy. Oh. Fuck! Look! What is that? How about that guy? <laughs> yeah. Check, check. Uh, it's fucking crazy, man. It's crazy. What is that shit? <laughs> What's all that shit? Yo, I've seen these great. Oh, shit. Guy. What is the shit? <laughs> What's all that shit? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 really. Uh, anyone here, Mason? Hello. Hello. cheeses you can get now. Like you can get like the wedges and and slices with the plastic on them and um, blocks and that. What's all that shit? <laughs> Hello that guy. No, that no one. Uh, I went I went to the uh, the doctor the other day. What's all that shit? <laughs> Doctors! Fuck, <laughs> 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 
Woody, I just spoke to the sponsor, and they seem to think, surprise, surprise, that we are not really relating with the target demo, the children. Um, they're not getting it, Woody. They're not getting it. <laughs> quite frankly, a lot of them are getting quite upset and traumatized by some of the, the key characters. I mean, what's with the puppets, Woody? I mean, they never do anything. The head falls off. Yes, I know his head falls off, Woody, but that's pretty much what's traumatizing a lot of them. I've hired you because you're the best at what you do. You're the best puppeteer I've ever met. Thanks. I know how much work you've put into the show, Woody. I know how much, I know it's your baby. You know I feel we can probably make a form out of this and sell it overseas. We'll, we'll have the, the, the British bok choy, Australian bok choy. Um, the possibilities are endless, providing we can work together and try and develop the, the show a little more. Thanks, mate. Okay. Cheers. Yeah, now we'll see you later. Thanks, Woody. Cheers. Oh, and Woody. Thanks, mate. Thanks for helping me through that, that nasty time a, a couple of weeks back. Mm -hmm. Thanks, man. So, um, yeah. <laughs> anyone here wear shoes? <laughs> What's all that about? What's that shit? Shoes? <laughs> hey, thank you, gentlemen. You've been fantastic. My name's Chico, and I will see you next week. Thank you. Assailant, um, or graffiti artist as we like to call him, has been spotted in the area. And uh, the way it works is that we're going to try and basically hone him in and, and, and try and basically zone in on him and catch him from there. Um, it's a bit. Oh, yeah, it's Now, stay coming up, mate. He's up here, come this way. Come here, come here. Here he is. That's the, the graffiti artist from the after. I've got him, I've got him, I've got him. Losing. Um, the assailant, that was, that was him. And what happened, um, right around the corner there was, a, there was a fence which he got over. Unfortunately, we were a little bit slow on this occasion, but we'll get him the next time. But okay. what as you happen, I got in a scuffle and he gave me um, what we call in, at the station a blue wedgie. Did he? So basically, it's, um, yeah. won't go into detail on you, but um, basically, he. Give me a blue wedgie, but that's what we trained for. You right? 18 months down at right? Valentine Police Academy here. Okay. Ah, so goddamn close. Just about here. Oh. It's part of the job. We'll call it in. The graffiti artists won't sleep well tonight, but neither will Constable Scott. Speedo Caps. You need to build your confidence. Um, and so we're giving them that opportunity. We, we think he had a, had a pretty good test, particularly defensively. He worked, he worked really hard at the back. Um, he covered a lot of ground. Um, when, he, when he tackled, he tackled hard. When he ran, he ran hard. And uh, so we're just trying to give him some confidence at, at this level to, to um, you know, keep progressing. He's a very good player. Just on, on that. C. M C M C. So you got M C M C A L L double L L three L. One L three L. One One M A C A L M C Alistair Alistair M C L A double T. One T. Okay. E R. E R. Michaelis. Her. Her. I her. L I. I I. 
L I E. L I E R I. Lister. Michael Lister. Thanks, mate. Even if times are tough, you know, that's probably when it's more important to get them right in behind us because it's not always going to be rosy um, um, happenings. So, um, yeah, when times are tough, get in there behind us, give us the support, and, uh, and we'll hopefully bring things around and, uh, and front up for you. So for the self-belief of the team and what we're doing as a group of people, I think it's important that we perform. I think we're on a bit of a roll. And it's not... <laughs> And, and the only way we can measure that is how we play. Um, no, we're making some progress and we're very pleased with the progress we're making, but we think we can...